Hey fam, hey fam, good day, good evening, good morning to you all. Um, who won that NCAA brackets last night? Was me. Oh yeah, it was me. I won. Won a couple of hundred dollars and that felt good this morning. Congratulations to the Villanova Wildcats. Much, uh, <clears throat> more importantly, congratulations to me. Anyway, we're going to review this Ayala. We're going to jump on in this Ayala. She was with Trina and Gabe. Now, if you guys don't follow the Braxtons, you're probably not real familiar with Trina, Braxton, and Gabe and their whole story and all that. But to make a long story short, they were married. They had this real dysfunctional marriage, in my opinion. This is all me. Um, dysfunctional marriage and a very public divorce and a very public back and forth. You know, we're going to get divorced. We're going to get together. We're going to get divorced. We're going to get together. Um... This episode turned out differently than what I had expected. I expected one thing and got something different, I'll be honest with you. Um, a couple of things I was surprised with. Because, of course, you know, I look at the Braxtons. I don't review the Braxtons because I, I, can't, I can't review the Braxtons. Um, but I do look at it. And I've looked at it almost from the beginning. And... First of all, I didn't think I could get through this episode because Trina irks me with the way she talks. That's first of all. Um, about halfway through, though, she the beginning she was giving you that that accent. I don't know what it is that she does, but uh, with some hurry. And she talks like that. I, I don't know. I can't get it. But it's annoying as fuck. Okay? So I didn't know if I'd even be able to get through the episode because of that. But she sort of drops her guard and let that go. And so she was giving us the real. She was giving us the real for a while. I mean, I think... I think she was as real as she could be. Um, with the cameras rolling. There was a point where Ayala took her... Let her go off camera and they had a conversation off camera. But I'm going to get to that. Okay, let me start from the beginning. Let me get to that. So Trina and Gabe are asking for help with... Trina actually reached out to Ayala. And she's asking for help... To sort of set, in her mind, set boundaries. Um, and her relationship with Gabe. Um, we find out that they're still very much friends, hanging out, talk all the time. And it's still we're having sex after the divorce. Uh, Trina went on vacation and invited Gabe to go with her. And they were very in they were intimate on the vacation. And he said that was the last time. They don't say how long ago that was, but it was after the divorce. And they've been divorced for two years. So, but then the relationship with her sons comes up. And she did address that on the show where she was saying how when Gabe divorced me, it was almost like he divorced the kids too. And she was really having a problem with Gabe not having a relationship with her sons. And they were her, he was all, he pretty much raised them, you know, as a their stepfather. And so... Ayala sort of pivots a little bit because she said, well, I thought I was here for this, but okay, I'm going to go down this road with you. And he, she asked him, well, why do you, why do you think you don't have a relationship with the boys? And, and Trina, why do you think that's your business? Because the boys are 19 to 22. And Ayala is saying, hey, I'm grown, you know, they're grown. And they're grown enough to, or mature enough to make a decision about whether they want to have a relationship with this man or not. And if they choose not to. It may be something that you don't want to accept or deal with, but it is what it is, and, and it's really not your place anymore. Well, that was sort of okay, but then when she talked to the boys, you get a lot of insight and understanding of why things were the way they were, even going back to Gabe and Trina's relationship. So what comes out is Caleb is the youngest son. Caleb is the one she's the most concerned with because Caleb has zero relationship with um, Gabe. To the point where Gabe stayed at the house for about a month in the guest house. He had surgery, stayed with them while he was recovering, and then stayed in the guest house for about, they said for about a month while he was buying a house in Atlanta. Now, I don't know where he was living before that, but okay. Caleb didn't even know he was at the guest house. Caleb said, I didn't, you know, Ayala was like, well, why Why didn't he was at the guest house for a month? Why didn't you speak to him? And he was like, I didn't know he was there. That's a problem. It's a problem for a lot of reasons. But the biggest reason why it's a problem is how you don't know who living in your house. Katrina, that's fucked up that he doesn't know who's staying on that property. I mean, 
it's so many reasons why that could go left, right, up, or down. But what Caleb also says is, hey, my mama was away. He didn't really raise us. You know, he was there physically, but he wasn't there mentally. Um, I felt like nothing was ever good enough. No matter what I did, he always wanted more. He was never satisfied. He was never happy. And I stopped trying to please him. And basically what he told Ayala was, I ain't never like his ass. I tolerated him, but I never liked him. Which says a lot as well. Because in Trina's mind, they stopped liking each other when the divorce came around. But he was like, no, nah, I never liked him. Which is understandable because when everything was so public, the infidelity was public, the way they would, all of that was public between social media and the Braxton's TV show, it, it was there. And I can't imagine too many people who would be cool with a man who was shown to have treated my mother the way he was shown to have treated her on the show and the things that happened on social media. So Ayala was like, well, wait a minute. It's more to this story than I was led to believe. So she goes back to Trina and Gabe. And she's like, well, hold up. Because I wrote this shit down because it was funny. She said, Trina, you was out chasing fame. And Gabe, you was chasing ass. So who was raising the kids? And I want to know the same question. Who was raising the kids? Trina, you out on tour with Tony and doing all that other stuff. And then with the show, the Braxton's and all that. Who was raising your children? I get it that you got to make a living and you got to make a hustle. But... The man you thought was raising your child, your children, he wasn't there. He wasn't available to them. He was physically there to make sure nothing happened, but he was not emotionally available to your children. And you didn't know that. And that's a problem, that you didn't know that. Um, what ends up coming out, Ayanla was saying, look, she said at the beginning, I was already hesitant about doing this with y'all because my experience with celebrities is that they feel like they have to protect their brand. And... I can't help you heal if you can't be honest and authentic in this process. And what she realized was she she felt she wasn't getting the whole story. She wasn't getting the whole story from Gabe. She wasn't getting the whole story from Trina. And so the next, you know, the beginning of day two, she pulls Gabe aside. And she has an off-camera conversation with him. Now, we can still hear some of it because I do think they edited a lot of it out. But we can hear enough that basically Gabe admitted that they him and Trina's relationship was abusive, but the other way around. That Trina was verbally abusive to him. That she, her tone and her words were disrespectful. And that he just always felt like he was never good enough. That he was never good enough to be with Trina Braxton. And so therefore, no matter how hard he tried, he always ended up, in his mind, it just didn't measure up. And it's interesting because that's the same thing. Caleb said about how Gabe treated him. He said, no matter what, I never felt like I was good enough. So you see that what Trina was giving Gabe, or in his mind what Trina was giving him, is what Gabe was giving to the kids. And so they had this whole cycle going. And so Ayanla has them talk about it and face it. And then she talks to Trina about herself. And this is where it got very tense and interesting. Now again, if you watch the Brats. Braxton's and what she said isn't surprising but what she said was you may not want to admit it or acknowledge it but you were taught that behavior you were taught how to treat a man and she said you may not want to accept that your mother taught you how to be a bitter woman and Trina got very emotional she's crying she got upset and she she walked off but if you watch the show then the reality is you saw that, yes. Evelyn Braxton is bitter. She's a bitter woman. I ain't saying she don't have a right to be. I'm not saying that that man didn't dog her because they addressed a lot of that in the last season. But she's bitter. And she's been bitter. And she's shown herself to be bitter. Every time the husband come up, she's bitter. Every time certain things come up in the girls' relationships, she shows that. She shows that. And she did pass it down, whether she meant to or not. She passed that down to her kids. Because you can't help it. If that's who you are and that's all you hear, and and your children, especially your girls, grow up hearing that all the time and seeing it and, and seeing your anger and your bitterness, then they have no choice but to pick that up. That transference is going to come. And that's what Trina did. But Trina didn't want to admit that on camera. She didn't want to put nothing negative out there about her mom or whatever on camera. That's what I felt. 
So Ayala had an off-camera conversation with her. This time, you didn't hear see anything. But when she came back, they alluded, she alluded to the fact that her and all of her sisters had that same, she didn't use the word better, but basically that same forcefulness, um, assertiveness, strong character. You know, she used all these fluffy words, but basically she was saying the same thing. And in her own way, she acknowledged that they got it from, from her mom uh, without being as blunt as Ayala was being about it. But again, if you read between the lines, you see what it is and you know what it is. Um, so then they, they, I believe they made a, a big breakthrough because Trina, you know, she said, I didn't know. And I believe her. She said, I didn't know that that's how you felt. And I didn't know that that's what I was doing to you. Um, because when you're in it and that's what you do and that's all you've ever known, you don't know. You don't realize that's what you're doing. So... That was a good thing. And I feel like they kind of cleared the air. I feel like they came to a really good kumbaya moment. Um, then it was time to deal with the boys. And her, and her and Gay's relationship with her sons. And really the youngest son, Kayla. Because the older son, they have a relationship. I mean, you know, it ain't, you know, lovey-dovey best friends. But they do have a relationship. They're cordial. So the youngest son, they proceeded to have a conversation with the younger son. Where Gabe, the youngest son was allowed to let Gabe know how he felt and told Gabe how he felt. And Gabe listened and heard it. And he said, you know, that's how I felt as well. So I was giving you what I was getting. And Ayala turned to, you know, Caleb and she said, you know, do you hear it? Are you receiving it? Because rewind, when she was talking to the boys earlier on, Caleb was coming off as a jerk to me. Now, I'm torn between him just being a teenager and being hurt and being in his feelings and having a wall up and him being a jerk. And I think there's a little bit of both. I think he's a little bratty, but I also think he was angry and had his wall up and really wasn't trying to hear none of what Ayala was saying. She wasn't. He wasn't trying to get that man a pass. He wasn't trying to give him an excuse or nothing. He was just like, I don't like him. I don't have no relationship with him and I'm cool and it is what it is. But I think I think he did want a relationship. So they were able to come to some sort of um, clear the air. And what Ayala said, which I think is valid, she said, um, give it time. You guys have made some inroads here. You've made some inroads here, but give it time. And then see what you guys can build. And, it, and it's up to you what, what, what you want. And she also said, and keep your mama out of it, which I think is very good advice. Trina, that ain't your business no more. Those boys are grown. And if they choose to have a relationship with Gabe, that has nothing to do with you anymore. Now, but my problem is your relationship with Gabe. Why are you still sleeping with that man? Why that man staying at your house? Why that man staying at, why are you taking care of him after surgery? Go tell him to go to one of his other hoes. All them hoes he was cheating on you with, let them take care of him. Let him stay at their house. You understand what I'm saying? And it's not about being bitter. It's just about setting boundaries, which is, you know, Ayanla kept saying about setting boundaries. It's about setting boundaries. Y'all are divorced. Y'all are not in a relationship. You don't have um, any interest in getting back with him. That's cool. So set that boundary. I don't know what it is about women, and I'm going to point the finger at myself because I've been guilty of it. I don't know what it is about women that we just can't let shit go. You done divorced this man. This man have been all on TV looking crazy. Both of y'all, whatever. Let it go. Stop sleeping with him. Stop being his first point of contact. Stop being his savior, his nursemaid. And like Ayala said, you the wife on the other side of the divorce. Stop being his wife on the other side of the divorce. That's what you need to do. And see, you're not going to do it. You're not. Because I can tell by your affect. That you, Because when Ayala was talking to you and saying what types of boundaries do you want to set, the first thing Gabe said was not having sex anymore. And your response was, well, we haven't had sex in a long time. I don't think that's one we need to worry about. Yes, it is. Because just because you haven't had sex in a long time don't mean you won't have sex again. And the problem is y'all need to cut that emotional and biblical cord and, and let it go. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Because as long as y'all are still connected that way, that's an emotional connection. For y'all, it ain't just no wham-bam, 
I'm just getting something off. It's emotional because I have a history. It can't be. So you're going to have to make a decision. And I'm not, I'm not certain that you're going to do it. I think some great inroads were addressed as it relates to his relationship with your sons. I think some great inroads were addressed as far as how he felt in the relationship, how you felt you in the relationship, and y'all were able to communicate some things that you weren't communicating to each other during the relationship or during the divorce. But where you guys go in the future, I think y'all going to still be playing this game back and forth. I really do. I think y'all going to still be on this merry-go-round, you know, and jumping off and jumping on. And I think that when Trina's in a relationship, then she's okay. But when she's, because the son alluded to the fact that Trina's dating somebody now. Um, the other thing that Ayanla said was that Trina conversations with her sons is inappropriate. That she allows her sons too much into adult business. And that's a problem that I think a lot of these, um, some parents make. Your children aren't your friends. They're not your confidants. They're not your besties. They are children. And if you need to have an adult relationship, then that's who you talk to. You call your sisters. You call your best friend. You call somebody else. You don't bring your children in on that. And some of the things that her son Caleb shared, Ayala was like, that wasn't your business. And he was like, well, me and my mom, we're really we're really uh, close. She said, doesn't matter. That's still your mother. You're still a child. And you shouldn't have had anything to do with that. You shouldn't have been a part of that conversation. And I agree. Um, he knew that the mom had low self-esteem after the divorce and the mom was dealing with depression and the mom didn't feel like she was good. Like those, in my opinion, are not conversations that need to be had with a child. A child stay in a child's place. Keep that child over there. You're the adult. You have adult conversations here and you deal with the children here. Because he's 19 now. Y'all were divorced two years ago, which means he was 17. It's no reason in the world why a 17-year-old should be in y'all business like that. It's it's not appropriate. So, it was a good episode. Um, sometimes a y'all Sometimes I could, I could, I could take her and sometimes I can't. So, that's why it took me so long to really watch this episode. Um, but I think this was a good episode. And I think she was appropriately addressing the concerns. I think she did i think she got everybody to a a happy place i still want to know what she said when them cameras was off though but anyway we are growing we are growing keep um clicking that subscribe button and keep hit, keep hitting that little bell and sending me them little comments y'all have a good day bye boobs